Join me, Trevor DeVal, as we embark upon campaign turn number one of the sci-fi miniature adventure game Five Parsecs from Home, today on Me, Myself, and Die. Hey everyone, I am, as always, your intrepid GM host and player, Trevor DeVal. Thanks so much for joining me here today on Me, Myself, and I on this brave new endeavor where we are going to embark upon a campaign of Five Parsecs from Home, a sci-fi tactical minis adventure game. It's a, it's a tactical game, uh, tactical miniature game, but with a bunch of RPG elements, so we're going to really dive into that. But if you do enjoy what I do here, please do consider hitting like and subscribe. It really does help the channel, or join us on Patreon and help support the show that way, or go to the website, Me, Myself, and Die.com where you can purchase all kind of handmade merch and all kinds of ways to support the show. But today we are going to get started with Five Parsecs from Home. Now, this isn't exactly a tutorial. I'm not going to stop and explain every little thing, but I'm going to go, go over kind of the basics because I'm learning this myself too. I've never played this game before, so no doubt there'll be mistakes made and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but let's, um, let's see how this works. So here's the thing. In Five Par Sex From Home, there's a number of ways you can play it. Basically, you, you, you build a crew, randomly or however you want to do it. You go on adventures, you have all kinds of things happen to your crew, and you can just kind of keep playing indefinitely until the crew dies or, or whatever sort of end point you establish is met. So I have an idea that the captain of this crew, which we will generate randomly, is a guy by the name of Ryson Ganimer. That's a name for a character I used to have years ago. And the idea is, is that he was part of a crew, a crew of a ship called the Vendetta. But the idea is, is that the crew of the Vendetta turned on him, rolled him, took him for everything it was worth, killed his friends, shot his dog, left him for dead. And so our guy, Rice and Ganimer, is now assembled a new crew, and he has landed on this particular planet, and he is out for bloody revenge. So what that means in, in game mechanics-wise is that every encounter you have, there's a possibility of encountering what they call a unique individual. So if that ever happens, the, there's a very strong likelihood that that unique individual is going to be one of these crew members. He's got to track these guys down and end them. And once he kills the last one... Game over. Let's see what happens. So first of all, Rice and Ganimer is a basic human. Let us randomly determine a little bit more about Rice and Ganimer, because all I know about him is what I just told you. First of all, we're going to roll in the background table. Military outpost, which means it gets plus one reactions. So he's going to be a little faster than your average bear, which is good. He is also the leader of this crew, which means he automatically gets one luck point. His motivation, well, we already know his motivation, it's revenge. <laughs> which means he gets plus two experience points. And he starts with a rival. Actually, we'll call it the Vendetta's captain, because the way I'm setting this up, I want to randomly encounter these, these crew people because in this game, your rivals can track you down or you can track them down. So I don't want to make it too easy. I don't want to be over in like two sessions or something. Captain Nix, we'll call him. The idea I have for the Vendetta basically is that when Ryson was part of the crew, they went off and they basically split all their loot and they went their separate ways. So the Vendetta's crew is no longer a crew. They're, they're individuals scattered across the stars. What was the class of Rice and Ganimer? Scoundrel. <laughs> He's kind of a Han Solo type. So a scoundrel class means he gets plus one speed. So he's faster. So this is him, by the way. This here, this is Rice and Ganimer. This is my paint job, which is terrible. I'm not a good painter at all. Uh, oh, that reminds me, I want to thank these people right here for helping me make this series. Without the help of uh, these companies and individuals uh, and patrons, I would not have been able to do this. So thank you all so much. I'm very excited to be bringing you this material, and uh, it's mostly because of these folks right here. Let's do this lady right here with the big gun. First of all, let's find out what she is. We know she's a human, because that's the miniature. That's how I'm doing that. Let's get her a name. Jenna Walker. I'm just using a random generator online. And her background, wealthy merchant family, plus 2d6 credits. And that credits, I think, are shared by the whole crew. Uh, so plus seven credits. What is her motivation? Political. So she comes from a wealthy merchant family. She has a political motivation, so she's, she's involved in the politics of the local star system. There is a patron and plus one story point. We don't know who the patron is yet. We'll find that out later. Probably someone connected to politics. Probably a government figure because she is political motivation. And what class 
is she? Troubleshooter, she gets plus one reaction. And plus one low tech weapon. We've got two, two pistols here. Two pistols is a dude. Stein Howard, who I like that. Stein Howard's background is 72. Primitive or regressed world. Plus one toughness and plus one low tech weapon. His motivation is technology. Oh, that makes sense. He comes from a primitive world. He's interested in technology, which gives him a plus one savvy, which is good. And plus one gadget. And his class. Bounty hunter. Coo. <laughs> plus one speed. Uh, one rumor. Rumors could lead to quests. Plus one low tech weapon. Then we've got this. I'm, I'm envisioning her as some kind of sniper. Mara Mason. Oh, I like that. These names all have kind of like a weird Western vibe to them, which is fine. Her background, orphan utility program. I'm guessing what that means is that they take orphans and they put them in some sort of governmental program to use them for governmental services. <laughs> Another patron, plus one story point. Mara's motivation, zero seven. Wealth, plus six credits. And her class. Special agent. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> the utility orphan program and she became a special agent. Plus one reactions, plus one gadget and another patron. They're gonna have lots of jobs available. We got this old big bruiser here. Vine mains, that's cool. Vine's background, 22. Raised in a space station. He gets plus one gear. Motivation. Freedom. But they'll never take our freedom. Which gives him plus two XP. And his class, he was a soldier. Plus one combat skill and plus 1d6 credits. Finally, we have our resident alien, literal alien. This is a precursor character, I've decided, because I want to use this mini. Precursors are kind of like space elves, a little bit like Eldar and Warhammer 40k. Aliens that are graceful and ancient, they've been around and all that kind of stuff. Kale Bresh, I like that. Okay, and the background of Kale, Kale Bresh, the precursor. Bureaucrat. Boy, this is a rich crew. Another 1d6 credits, another four credits. And Kale Brush's motivation. Power! A, beer, a precursor power crat. Power crat? <laughs> <laughs> a precursor bureaucrat motivated by power, which means that he gets an extra two XP. And a rival, his class. Explorer. Explorer is plus two XP and plus one gear. Ooh, starts with four XP. That is the crew. But yeah, let's deal with equipment. So the crew does three rolls on the military weapon table. For each crew member who rolled at least one savvy increase, you may take one of these rolls on the high-tech weapon instead if desired. Stein Howard uh, had an extra savvy. First one, that is a boarding saber, infantry laser, and our high-tech weapon, because of the savvy, hand laser. Well, let's go through this. We get three rolls on the low-tech weapons. All right, hunting rifle, handgun, scrap pistol, we also get from our uh, backgrounds three additional low-tech weapons, so I'm gonna roll those now. First one's gonna be 77, which is hunting rifle, so two of those. Blade, colony rifle. That's all of our weapons, that we get one roll in the gear table, but we get plus two from our background. Steel boots, fixer. And finally 17 is booster pills. One roll on the gadget table, but we also have plus two gadgets from our background. So the gadget, the first one is 93, which is a stealth gear. Scanner bot. Battle visor. I get an additional six credits, which means I have 29 credits to start, which is fantastic. But we have three patrons and two rivals. We also got to know about our ship. It's going to be called the Furious. The ship's called the Furious. An unreliable merchant cruiser. It has a debt of 26. I could pay that off like that. Ha! Rich, rich people already. It's got a hull of 30. How did these people meet? They met through Hired by a random member of the group. Well, I don't think it's gonna be a random member, I think it's the captain. Because he had a very specific mission, going after the crew of the Vendetta and killing them. Revenge. How are they best characterized? In it for the credits. Well, they're super rich, I guess they want more. They're motivated by money. How is that gonna play out? How is that gonna, how is that gonna add things or change things in the game? We'll just keep that in mind as we're coming up with the details of stuff as we randomly go along. They're in it for the credits, and it makes sense. They were hired by the captain to do a job, so they are, I don't think they're a super close crew because they're just kind of hired guns, but you know, the bonds of combat may bring them together, we shall see. Okay, so, can, so that's the characters. We're ready to go here. We are ready to actually start this thing.
Selective victory condition, I've said that if we kill eight unique individuals, that those unique individuals, or rather if we kill eight unique individuals who happen to be members of the Vendetta's crew, then that will be victory conditions for this campaign. And then story points. So story points in this game, they are able to do all kinds of cool stuff. I've already got plus two. When starting a new campaign, begin the game with 1d6 plus one story points. So that's six plus two story points is eight story points. These guys are rich and lucky. Also, there's something called the stars of the story. These are basically uh, five things you can do uh, once in the whole campaign, once each. And uh, it gives you special things. I'm gonna make little, little cards, so I have that. First of all, let us determine what this world is, and I'm gonna roll on the world traits table. Putnik 2 is the name of the world. Check for licensing requirements. Two, so it does not require a freelancer license to perform patron jobs. The world traits, what kind of world is this? 32. Busy markets. So there's a lot of trade going on here. So it's a busy trade center. Now we go into world steps, upkeep and ship repairs. Well, I don't have uh, each campaign turn. You must pay upkeep for your crew, representing the paychecks, booze, food, anything else like that. So it's one credit if you have four to six crew. Automatically, I'm losing money, just like that. Ship debt, now we do owe 26 credits on this ship. At this point, you can make payments on the ship and the starport. If you still owe money on your ship, the amount is now increased by one. Oh yeah, so they charge you interest. <laughs> I'm gonna pay off 10 credits on this ship, which means that I'm down to 18, but it's gonna cost me one in interest. So it's actually down to 17. Okay, assign and resolve crew tasks. So in this world of Putnik 2, busy marketplace, Captain Rice and Ganimer and his crew are, are, are scouring the marketplace for rumors, for patrons, the rivals, for the, the, well, Ganimer's looking for any sign that the crew of the Vendetta might have come through this way. So let's decide what these crew tasks are gonna be. First of all, we do have a lot of patrons here. So we should probably have someone go look. Yeah, you know what? I don't think Captain Rice and Ganimer is ready yet to hunt down his rivals. I think he's got to get he's got to get st he's got to get stronger first. So I think what he's going to do is he is going to go and look for a job. He'll bring Stein with him to go look for a patron. And these are busy markets, so we could spend two credits to roll once at the tra trade table. Yeah, they got a lot of money. They should probably do that. So Jenna is going to go trade. Actually, someone should go on decoy. I think Kale's gonna go on decoy and Mara and Vine are going to go exploring. So let's let's go in order here. Find a patron. That's the captain and Stein. Roll a d6 and add the number of the crew members who are looking, so plus two. If the crew has an old patron among their contacts, uh, each patron adds plus one to the roll. Well, we have three patrons. This is plus five. We're gonna find one of them for sure. 10, which is... We found two patrons and we may choose either job. Uh, the first offer is from a patron that we have. Which one? It's gonna be Jenna's. And the other is going to be a random, uh, a new patron. I mean, it's all random because we don't know who these people are yet anyway. Who is Jenna's patron? Jenna, I should remind us, is the wealthy merchant family, political, motivated, and uh, troubleshooter. Local government makes perfect sense as these two walk into the government offices here on Putnik 2, and they've been given a description of this patron by Jenna, so they know who to look for, and in fact, they do find this this person. The danger place, plus one credit. Okay. It's not a hugely well-paying job, unfortunately. What is the time frame? This or the next campaign turn? So they don't have to do it right now if they don't want. Local government, is there a benefit? No. Is there a hazard? No. Is there a condition? No. Let's see what the random patron who we just met is. That's probably gonna be Stein, who runs into a patron maybe at the bar or something. Uh, who is this patron that he discovers? Local government. I wonder if it's the same office or if it's a different office. And what is their job worth? Five. Ooh, plus two credits. Time frame is this or the next campaign turn. And any benefits? Nope. There is a hazard. And what is the hazard involved? Private transport. If you have rivals, they cannot track you this campaign turn. It's, a, it's in this case, it's a hazard, but it's a good thing. That the rivals cannot track us if we take this job, which means that this job is gonna be out of the spaceport, probably somewhere in the wilderness, I'm guessing. Because otherwise the rivals might be able to track you easier. And no conditions. Okay, so those were the two patrons that they found, both from the local government. One is not a very good job, but it's in town. The other is a better job, but you know, they have to go out of the spaceport to do it, but that's actually fine because it means the rivals can't find them, which is kind of makes, makes um, Kale's decoy work kind of useless, but that's okay. 
Trading. Who is trading? I sent Jenna to trade, I believe. You roll once at the trade table. We can also spend two credits anyway, because it's busy markets, but let's see what happens here. This is the crew bartering unspecified items we found along the way for new interesting goods. What do we trade for? What do we get? We get pre-owned. <laughs> Uh, roll once on the loot table. The item is damaged and needs repair. Interesting. Jenna decided to buy a used something. <laughs> what was it? A military rifle. Damaged military rifle. We could use that fixer on board the ship to automatically fix it if we so desired to. Okay, that was her in the trade. Let's spend the two credits because we can. Let's spend the two credits on the trade table again because they're very busy markets here on Putnik 2, 39. Oh no, she gets completely lost. She's got to roll 1d6 plus savvy. Her savvy, Jenna's savvy is zero, so 1d6. She rolls a two. Oh no! She's unable to participate in a battle this campaign turn. Oh, she gets completely lost in the bustling, sprawling, busy markets of Putnik 2. This is clearly a giant uh, city because it's so, the markets just go on and on and on. So she gets completely lost. She's not going to be able to participate in the mission. Oh no, I paid for this. Terrible. Either way, roll again on this table to see what they find while wandering the streets. Oh no, Jenna's out. 56. But what does she find? Oh, she overhears some talk as she's wandering the streets, desperately trying to find her way back on the maglev, the rail, mag rail system, whatever, to get back to the, uh, the starport and the ship. She overhears some talk and gains a rumor. She's lost in Putnik Prime. We'll call it Mara and Vine were exploring, I believe. See the sights around town. Hopefully, maybe they'll run into Jenna. For each crew member exploring roles once on the exploration table. All right, so we'll start with Mara. She makes a new friend. Roll up a new character and add them to the crew. That means that we can actually bring this new member of the crew with us because Jenna's lost, which is good. So we actually will have sex, which is great. What about, what about Vine? An alien merchant. Give him any item, then roll on the loot table. Mm. He's got good stuff. He's with Mara. We could trade her a hunting rifle. Oh, it's dangerous though. He's got an infantry laser and a boarding saber. These are really good. I, nah, I don't think so. I think this alien merchant, tentacles on his mouth or something, like a squid face kind of thing. Vine doesn't want to, he doesn't want to take that. Yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to take that, uh, that deal. Thanks. You know, he, uh, whatever this alien has to offer, it's not nearly as good enough as the stuff that Vine's already got. So that was them. Which means that the last thing to do is do decoy. The do decoy is a decoy. We're rolling to see if rivals track you down at plus one to the roll for every crew member sent to act as a decoy. But here's the thing. If we decide to take that mission, they can't track us down this campaign turn. Resolve any rumors you may feel. Yes, well, so we have two rumors. If you're not currently on a quest, roll a d6 at this stage. If the roll is equal to or below the number of rumors, we've received a quest and we rolled a six, so no. Choose your battle. Okay, check for rivals. First, you must check that your rivals give you the opportunity to choose your battle. I read this to mean that if we decide to take this mission, then our rivals can't track us. But normally you roll for rivals before you choose the mission. I'm gonna say that if I if I choose the mission, they can't track us, so I'm, I'm gonna choose the mission because it it's the best paying job anyway. So we are carrying out a patron job and then we proceed to the battle section of the rules. Ooh, so cool. Oh yes, we have to roll up the new friend. It's a human. Lower mega city class. So this is like a, 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 a ganger who exists in the undercity. That's kind of cool. So this person's gonna have a low tech weapon, a blade. Motivation of this character, 19. Glory. Ooh, a, a ganger who's out for glory. Glory is plus one combat skill and plus one military weapon. Military rifle. The class of this person. Scientist. A underhive ganger out for glory who is also a scientist. Plus one savvy and plus one gadget. A stim pack. This mini isn't fully painted yet. She has a name. Kathria Rezal. Love it. Kathria Rezal is our new character who will be going into battle with the rest of the group minus Jenna, because of course Jenna is hopelessly lost in the city, in the main city of Putnik 2. So when our group decides to go back to that government office and decide to accept 
the job. The job is definitely going to be outside of town. We're gonna find out about that in a second, but before we do... First, a word from this video's sponsor. Today's video sponsor is Broken Anvil Miniatures. Fans of Broken Anvil know them for their beautifully sculpted minis and fresh designs. And now, they've got a brand new web store with a great selection of some of BAM's most beloved models, both old and new. They've got Sir Tornavir, they've got Orcs Galore, and a newly released Turkey Paladin. The BAM team also has a new collection live right now called Forged, which is a huge collection of fantastically sculpted 28mm heroic scale pre-assembled plastic miniatures together with 5e compatible content. As this campaign grows, so can your haul. Dozens of free and purchasable extras are waiting to be unlocked and added to your collection. So if you want to get your hands on a massive assortment of BAM's miniatures, this is your chance to do so without breaking the bank. Links to Broken Anvil's website and Forged campaign are in the video description below. Low. So what is the nature of this battle? First of all, we determine the deployment conditions. It's a patron mission, so 89. Caught off guard, your squad all act in the slow actions phase in round one, so they're going to be essentially ambushed in the first, uh, in the first round. Ooh, that's bad. Notable sights on this particular battlefield. Is there anything of interest? 83. There's a peculiar item. Gain plus two X. Now, what is the objective that the government of Putnik 2 wants us to achieve? It is a protect mission. We will be accompanied by a VIP character, probably from the government. They are unarmed and may never initiate a brawl, but will defend normally. They cannot be given any equipment. They must set up at least 12 inches from the center of the table. The enemy must set up 12 inches from the center on their side. If the VIP spends a full round within three inches of the center of the table, you win. So the VIP is trying to get to something in the middle of the table. If you achieve this within the first four rounds of the game, you earn an additional two credits. So we've got to get this VIP to the center of the table because something's there that this government worker needs to do. So this member of the government, we don't know anything about Putnik 2 other than it's, it's, it's a heavily, uh, uh, it's a mercantile society. It's a big, big marketplace. Well, let's, let's, let's find out some more. Who is the enemy? Patron mission. Who is the enemy? 69. Interested parties. Oh, we might, we have, we might encounter a unique individual here. Who are the interested parties? 15. Abandoned. Occasionally, a sort of sickness strikes crews in deep space for extended durations. The causes are unknown, but they often seek out old acquaintances attacking an animal like fever. I know what happened. So this is cool. So yeah, so basically the mission is they have to get this government official. He is some sort of scientist or some sort of, uh, maybe he's he, like an archaeologist, something. He, he, he's working for the local government. There was a ship that crashed under mysterious circumstances. It's sort of a top secret thing, but this government official needs to get to the ship, to the center of the ship, and acquire something in the middle of the wreckage, basically. But unbeknownst to anybody, the ship was actually crewed by abandoned, which are people that basically go nuts in space, you know, kind of like the crew of the Event Horizon. <laughs> also, Careless, we're plus one to seize the initiative. So we could get the drop on them, even though we're taken by surprise by them because of the nature of this encounter. Cowardly, lieutenants are affected by morale dice. Okay, the numbers. Roll 2d6 and pick the higher result. Six, great. So six opponents, but abandoned means plus one. Because there's seven of them, Two of them are specialists, and one non-specialist will be a lieutenant. Is there a unique individual? Well, because these are interested parties, there's a plus one to this roll. Nine or more, and we get a unique at six plus one is seven, so no, there is no unique individual here, but there is two specialists and a lieutenant. So what are their weapons? They are using scrap pistols, but there's two specialists among them. And the specialists have something else. The first specialist has a hunting rifle. And the second specialist has, ooh, a handgun and ripper sword. And the lieutenant. The lieutenant has a scrap pistol and a blade, has plus one combat, and suffers morale. 
because they're cowardly. So we know what the deal is. We know that there's a crash ship, a crash ship somewhere in the the forest, the jungle, or whatever the 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 area turns out to be. And our guys got to get through it and get the VIP to the center of that ship so that he can extract the thing from the ship. And they got to do it quickly before the crazed, deranged crew of this down ship comes after them, as they are no doubt going to do because they are aggressive. Let us go to the table and see what that looks like. <laughs> So here we are in battle round one. Our team has been successfully privately transported to the location of the crashed ship. Uh, that was a condition of the of the patron mission that they would be privately transported. And that's the reason why the rivals weren't able to track them down. They basically got here on like a, a private government shuttle kind of thing uh, that landed just outside the uh, the area of the crashed ship, which you can see here. Jen is not with the group, but Kathria is. Uh, here also, this is the, the 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 VIP that the government sent. We got to get that that VIP to the center of the ship and allow her to to be there, basically unmolested for uh, I, I think a full round. So we know that our enemies are the abandoned, which are the crazed uh, members of this ship that crashed, who are still somehow alive and quite quite insane. Uh, we know that they are careless, so we get plus one to seize the initiative, which is the very first thing we're going to do. Uh, we know that they're cowardly, which means even their lieutenants roll for morale loss, which is, again, good for us. Uh, we also know that there is a peculiar item somewhere in the vicinity. The peculiar item is placed 2d6 plus 2 inches in a random direction from the center of the table and can be acquired by moving it to contact with it and foregoing any other actions that round. So let's make our first roll of the game. It is seven, oh, this way, seven inches this way from the center of the table, which is bang, right, right there. We do have the seven enemies here, two of which are specialists, uh, one of which is a lieutenant. The ship is crashed in the center of the forest. You can see flames, oh, flames burning everywhere here. Uh, the flame counts as an impassable object. It also blocks line of sight. This here is our round counter, so we're on round one. I'm gonna put it over here. The first step we do, we can attempt to seize the initiative. So what we do here, we roll 2d6 and, and roll the highest savvy of the group, including the plus one to seize because these guys are careless. They're blundering around in the woods, so we get a chance to see them. Also, don't forget that we unfortunately are caught off guard in this mission, which means that uh, in round one, we'll all act in the slow phase. So we're not actually gonna roll for initiative, but we do roll to seize the initiative. So here we go, 2d6 plus the highest savvy of the group, Stein with plus one. So we're rolling uh, 2d6 plus two. So we are looking for 10 or more. So 2d6 plus two, and we roll six plus two is eight. Unfortunately, we are unable to seize the initiative. So that's bad. So that means that we really are caught off guard. So as we enter the area here, uh, it becomes very apparent that something is wrong, the ship has crashed, a lot of the trees are on fire. Uh, there's no sign of bodies, which is uh, of particular concern to the crew, as uh, they expected to see bodies splayed out everywhere, but there isn't. And that is because the survivors have eaten them! Yes! Oh yes! They're crazy cannibals now, apparently! Yeah, why not? Uh, <laughs> and and these new, new crazed cannibals are on their way to attack our guys here. So, uh, we do not make a reaction roll because we are caught off guard. So everybody acts in the slow round, which is terrible. Um, now we do quick actions. Nobody has quick actions, so we go immediately to the enemy action. All of these enemies here are aggressive enemies, which means aggressive enemies with opponents in sight will advance at least half a move and then attempt to rain, remain in cover. But here's the thing, is anybody currently in sight? Well, actually, if I look down through here, you can kind of see that, yeah, you can technically see them. So here's the thing, they can actually see the enemies through here, but in terms of line of sight, that's why we have our fancy little poker here. I think the only one that might be able to see anybody at all, Catherine can't see because she's blocked by this terrain piece here, uh, and then she would be blocked by the fire. Yeah, she'd be blocked by the fire. However, Mara, our sniper with the hunting rifle, does have line of sight, or rather the, the baddies have line of sight on her, but I think it's just these two. Yeah, these two have line of sight on her, so they're the only ones that can actually see her. 
So they'll uh, advance at least half a move towards attempting to remain in cover if they can. Half move towards cover. I, well, th there is no cover within a half a move of them. So I think that this guy who can see here is gonna make a full move of four and then he's gonna do a dash of two inches more to get behind the flames. This guy is also, I think, going to move over here behind this rock. Now the rest of them, they don't see our team. So, so enemies that are unable to see opposition uh, or which are within 12 inches will advance as fast as possible towards the nearest opponent attempting to enter a brawl. They won't do that if the person has a higher combat skill. We know that this is the closest person, Kath, Kathria. So that means everybody else is going to advance uh, as fast as they can, so they're gonna be doing dashes. So that means that this guy is gonna dash right through the gap. Boom, which is gonna put him there. That is our leader, actually. I think uh, these guys are gonna dash. He's gonna sort of follow him right behind him. He's already moved. He's gonna dash this way, which puts him by the item of peculiar interest. That's probably some sort of like, maybe it's some like computer consoles or something that survived or some sort of data data storage or something like that it, it's you know our guys might not even get there but and uh, this is a specialist who is also going to go six and finally this last abandon is also going to run six so they are staying in a large kind of a cluster formation uh because that is what aggressive enemies tend to do now it's time for our guys to go they can go in any order we want in the slow phase uh they can move and attack but you can't attack and then move Who's gonna start first? Well, let's start over here with uh, Kathria, cause she's right there. So she does see the enemy. Um, she sees the enemy, but if she was to shoot, she would have, uh, the, the enemy would be in cover because of the thing here. So she could move and fire if she wanted. However, Kathria, ooh, she's got a military rifle, which has got a great range of 24, which means she could actually hit. Now it's a, it's a tough hit, but I think what she's gonna do, she's gonna try and get to cover first of all, which is a, always a smart thing to do. Katria's move is four. So she's gonna move four, which puts her right there. It's not quite enough to be in cover. Although, well, yeah, if, I mean, she could fire. She'd be firing to, to the, the edge of the woods. The edge of a large terrain piece like this actually blocks line of sight. So she can't actually see past this so she still can't see so i'm just gonna dash her actually into the woods themselves now she's in the trees nobody can see her she's done um however this is interesting mara has a clear shot basically through here at the closest enemy she can see which is the leader so the question is is she going to move up first and take that shot because she's not in any cover at all yeah so she's going to move up here like this now mara unfortunately Oh yeah, this is the other thing. Mara has a hunting rifle, which is heavy, which means if she moves and fires, she's gonna be at minus one. She also has stealth gear, which means that over nine, uh, a distance of over nine inches, the enemy's minus one to hit her, which is good. It's kind of like having cover, so I wonder if she should move at all. Yeah, you know what? She's gonna rely on the stealth gear. She's gonna stay where she is, as she slowly blends into the surrounding grasses and, and low shrubs and trees of the edge of this wood. But she takes a bead, lines up, and she is going to fire at the leader. Now, this is a range of, uh, well, it's quite a significant range. There's no, uh, there's no impeding terrain, so there's no cover, because she has a straight shot right underneath the ship, which is kind of cool. She does have a shot. She is not moved, which means she is going to aim and fire. Now, when you aim and fire, that means you can reroll ones. The hunting rifle has one shot. This enemy is uh, in the open, as in not in cover, but more than six inches away, so it's five plus to hit her. She's rolling, her combat skill is zero. She gets one shot, yeah, she needs fives to hit him. She's aiming, which means she can reroll ones. And look at that, she aims, so she rerolls the one. She hits with a five! The hunting rifle cracks out as the bullet speeds through the wreckage and, and, and strikes, who oh, strikes the leader, the lieutenant, which is fantastic. Okay, the damage of this is plus one. So we, we're gonna roll with a plus one, we're gonna compare it to the Lieutenant's toughness, which is three. Oh, this is, this could take him out immediately. Here we go, D6 plus one, plus one, four, which means she, boom, she takes the leader out and blows his head off right away, boom. Down goes the Lieutenant, awesome. <laughs> 
everybody's gonna have to make a morale check when it comes for that time. So that was a very effective round for Mera. Meanwhile, over here, we've got Stein. Stein has a hand laser and a scrap pistol. So these are both short range weapons, 12 inches and nine inches. So he's gotta get to cover and try and move up. I think he's going to dash. He's gonna put himself right there, which is gonna be behind this cover here, at least blocking line of sight. That's it for him. Stein has a speed of five. I forgot about that. So he actually moves another inch, which is good. Okay, um, we have Vine who's got a move of four. He's using an infantry laser with a range of 30. So, and, he's, and that has snapshot and snapshot means I think if you're within six inches, uh, you get a plus one to hit. Nobody is within six inches. He's got a range of 30, but he does not have a shot on anybody right now. He's also gonna dash, which gives him six inches up this way. Uh, he dashed, so that's the end of his round. Over here, we have our leader, our fearless Captain Rice and Ganimer. His move is five. He's using a colony rifle. So again, 18 inch range is pretty good. Uh, he doesn't have line of sight on anybody, so he is going to also make his way. He's going to dash, which for him is seven inches, because it's five plus two, which puts him there. We have Kale. Oh, yes, we should deal with the VIP. She's going to follow the captain, basically. She's got a move of four. She's going to dash up as well. She's trying to get to the center, so she's going to get right behind Vine. Over here, we have Kale. Kale Bresh, his move is... Oh, he's also fast with five. He's got a handgun, which is not great, range 12. Again, he is going to dash up uh, five and two is seven, so he's gonna wind up there. Okay, so that is everybody's slow actions, and now I believe we go to the uh, morale phase. Yeah, at the end of the round, roll 1d6 per casualty and dice that are equal to uh, or below the panic range uh, cause one figure to bail. So, here's the score, we just lost the lieutenant which means that we're gonna roll one die. The panic range of the enemy is one to three. And yes, one of them's gonna panic and it's gonna be the one who's the closest to the uh, edge of the table, which is him. So this guy sees the Lieutenant get his head blown off right in front of him ah! and runs off screaming into the into the forest. Oh, that reminds me. Uh, Mara also got the first casualty of the, of the team. So she's gonna get plus one XP now. Morale was done, they moved off, which brings us, I believe, to the end of the round. Round two. Okay, now we're actually gonna roll, there's no more CZ initiative, but now we're gonna roll reactions. So now we're gonna roll dice. There's seven characters, so we're gonna roll seven dice and assign them initiatives, basically. So each of these characters has a reaction score. So I'm gonna roll here and I get, well, that's a one. That's gonna help us. The rest of them aren't, because nobody has a reaction of three or more. So basically this one, one person's gonna act in the, in the in the quick phase, everybody else is gonna act in the slow phase, so that kind of sucks, because nobody has a reaction of three or more. <laughs> That's a terrible roll. Unfortunately, the only one who's gonna act in the fast phase, I think it's gonna be, does Mara, ha Mara still has a clear shot at one of those specialists, so she's gonna go in the, in the fast phase, everybody else is gonna go in the slow. So we go to Mara, so she's gonna aim and fire, which means crack that she re-rolls a one. Okay, she's rolling with a combat of plus zero, and it's a it's a straight shot, but in range, so it's five up for this. And does she do it? She re-rolls a one because of the aim, and she gets two. So in this case, she fires and misses. So that is the end of Mara's turn. Now we go to the enemy's turn. So the specialist can definitely see Mara. Every, everyone else here is obscured by cover. So that means the specialist is gonna do a half move into cover and possibly fire, but the, the, the specialist here has a handgun, which is a range of 12, and I do not think that's gonna be enough. Nonetheless, I think that the specialist is gonna move two inches up to here to try and gain cover from the rocks. If you're within one inch of a terrain feature, it's assumed you're using it as cover. Uh, and he still has a shot on her if he's within range. That's the question, Jimmy. He is not at all within range, so he cannot fire. Um, so I think what he's going to do is he's going to, uh, he's gonna continue moving instead. So he just moved two, I'm gonna give him his other two movement. They gotta get up here. Um, I think I'm gonna give his movement another two inches just underneath the rocks here. And he'll, he'll be within one inch of that feature. So he's gonna, he's gonna be able to use that as cover. They can see him in there or not. So they're just gonna move towards the closest. So they're all gonna move towards where Stein is basically. So this guy, he's gonna move his full move of four and dash up here. 
there. Uh, this guy is going to, uh, he's gonna dash to the edge of this wood right there. In fact, I think I'm gonna put him in that forest. So he's on the edge of that forest, which means that uh, he can still see um, and he, he benefits from, from cover. This is a rifleman. Now, yeah, he's got a he's got a hunting rifle, so he should really use that. So he, uh, but he can't see the enemy, but he knows they're there. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to move him. I'm going to move him four inches here, which puts him within an inch of that, so he can still benefit from that cover. Now he's got a line of sight on Mara, so he's moved, and now he's firing. It's a hunting rifle, and he's moved, so that's minus one to hit. So she's normally. Uh, oh, and minus, another minus one to hit because of her stealth gear. So this shot is normally, this is normally a five up. So he needs, I, I don't think he can do it. It's five up, but he's minus two to the roll. Five minus two is three, so he misses. This guy over here though, I think this fella, this, this dude, hey dude, this dude right there, he is going to move up, up, move up. Now, when you move vertically, it's the same inch cost, basically. So he's going to move uh, the the two inches up and then two inches over here is where he's going. And that is everybody. Now we go to the slow turn and that is everybody except for Mara. Stein, Steine. Let's begin with Steine over here. So he's going to move a five. He's going to move, uh, he's going to move three inches to the edge, one inch up and one inch over. That puts him there with uh, uh, five. Now, from here, he does have a shot at this guy, but his line of sight is obscured and this guy is in cover. So basically that's gonna be, certainly not within six. So he has a shot with his hand laser uh, at six up. Okay, Stein attacks, no combat bonus. He's, he fires his hand laser. So he's rolling six to hit him. He does not, <laughs> hand laser. <laughs> Misses there. That was Stein. Uh, we've got uh, Katrina. Now, Katrina is going to move her two inches. She's still in cover here, but she is basically, she can now see the specialist there, and uh, she can see the specialist hiding under the, the, the wreckage of the ship, and she's definitely going to fire uh, her military rifle well within range. She's got one shot. So she has a combat bonus of plus one. So she is firing. What's the distance? This guy, this guy is not within six inches. So this is a, this is a six, uh, she needs six or more to hit, but she rolls with plus one because she is a pretty good fighter and she rolls five plus one is six. So she hits him with the military rifle, which does damage against this toughness of three, six immediately takes out that specialist. That was Katrina. We've got these folks over here. Let us deal with uh, the captain first. The captain's gonna move, he does five. So he's gonna move, still in cover, but right at the edge. Over here we have Vine with his infantry laser. He doesn't really have a shot on anybody either. He's not hugely fast either, so if he was to move a dash, that would put him, that would put him there. Yeah, he's gonna dash over here, and basically uh, uh, he's gonna gain some of the cover from this this feature here as he's crouched down behind the rocks. Kale, actually, let's do um, let's do our VIP. She moves four and then two, so she dashes up into the woods behind the captain here. And finally, Kale, who's using his handgun, just got a pistol. Uh, Kale also moves at five. He's quite fast. Kale's gonna dash, dash Rendar. He's gonna dash Rendar it. Oh, don't sue me, Disney. Uh, <laughs> he's gonna go over here. Uh, actually, he's gonna go over this way. He's still gonna, eh, he can't really use cover against that. I'll rule, he's, he's kind of in the open there. Okay, that was them. Um, morale, they did lose one figure this turn. So I have to make a morale check and if it falls within one to three, somebody panics, somebody panics and it's the person towards the farthest edge of the table and that <laughs> in this case is the other specialist who has had enough and he turns tail to flee. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, it's going incredibly well for our crew so far. Incredibly well. Uh, okay, we go to round three. Round three. Now, normally in round two, you can do an, an optional roll on the battle events table where something cool happens, but this is my first game, so I'm just going to avoid that. Just going to keep going as it is here. All right. Round three. 
All of our guys are still up. So we roll initiatives. Oh, look at this, three and two. So basically three of them are gonna be in the slow, four of them. So two I'm gonna to assign to somebody with a reaction of two. So that's gonna be the captain. The captain is going on two. I think, I think our, um, our VIP is gonna go on one as well. Stein is gonna go on one. And I think, I think Kale's gonna go on one. So that means that Katrina, or Katrina, Kathria, Kathria, Vine, oh, <laughs> and uh, Mara are going on the slow turn. Okay, so on the fast turn, let's deal with Stein first. He's actually gonna try and get that, that item. So Stein, I think, is gonna stay up high, because it does give him some, some advantages. Stein is gonna move. He can move up to five if he wants. He's gonna move over here, which might give him some interesting lines of sight. Yeah, he can hit both of these, but they're both behind cover. But are they in range? Oh, they're not in range. Oh, they're in range of both his pistols, but not within six inches. Okay, so Stein is gonna fire. He's gonna fire, I think, with his, it doesn't really matter, his uh, hand laser again. And he's gonna fire at the closest enemy, because you kind of have to. This guy is within range, but he's behind cover, so this is gonna be a six up. Stein shoots with no combat bonus, and he misses. He did not, he rolled a one, but he did not aim because he moved, so he can't reroll that. That's it for Stein. Uh, over here, Kale. I think Kale is going to move his five, which he can do, which puts him here next to the burning bush. And, uh, and then he also has a shot. It, it, he does have a shot, but it's just right. Yeah, it's, 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 he does get a shot, but it's, it's behind cover. He's not within six inches either. Ooh, well, actually he is. He is within six inches, which means Kale, when he fires his handgun, is gonna be rolling on five up because it's uh, uh, the enemy is six inches away, but behind cover. Um, he does not have a combat bonus, so he's looking at fives up. Does he hit him? No, and again, no reroll on ones because he did not aim, so that's it for Kale. Unfortunately, he fires off a shot, but it ricochets off the wreckage, the burning wreckage of the ship. Let's go to the captain over here. Captain is looking good as far as he can tell. He is going to move, he can move up to five, so he's gonna move into cover here into this wreckage. And can he see anybody? No, I, I, there's too much in the way. He's gonna dash and he's gonna just get deeper into cover basically. Um, and that means that our VIP is gonna follow him. She's gonna dash at uh, uh, six. She's gonna get right up be behind him. She is now in the middle of the ship where exactly she needs to be. If she spends a full round within three inches of the center, she wins, or we win, if you achieve this within the first four rounds of the game and earn an additional two credits. So we might actually be in, in a range of victory right here just by the fact that she, but she has to spend a full round there. If she does and doesn't get killed, then uh, we'll win and we'll get a bonus pay. That is them. I think that's everybody. Yeah, so um, these are our two guys left, or three guys left in our slow round. So now we go to the enemies round. Well. Here's the thing, these guys are aggressive. Opponents in sight will advance at least half a move towards them, attempting to remain in cover if possible. Uh, they'll try and brawl if they can. So I think what that means is this guy's within six. Um, this is cover, but it's not difficult terrain, so he could get he could get on top of this and basically be crouched down, still in cover, and he's going to fire with his scrap pistol at Kale, who is now within six inches. There's nothing special about the scrap pistols. They're just straight up boring old uh, uh, guns. One shot, range of nine. But he's within six now and Kale's in the open, which means this is a fairly easy shot. So that this, this, this wild-eyed abandoned climbs on top of the wreckage ah, and fires off a, a burst of scrap pistol fire. <laughs> Kale, does he hit? He has no combat bonus, but he only needs three to hit him. Ooh, and he will hit Kale with a barrage of scrap pistol rounds. <laughs> now, he has to roll against Kale's toughness. Scrap pistol is straight up. Kale's toughness is, is only two. Right, because precursors are slightly more fragile than humans. So what this means is, oh boy, yeah, this is bad. This is bad. If he gets two or more, Kale is removed. Oh, instant casualty. Oh, Kale is 
taken out. Not necessarily dead. We don't know what happened to Kale, but he is removed from play. This guy over here, this enemy, he sees this and with a howl of victory, moves up four to here and is gonna take a shot. He's just within six inches of of Stein, but both of them are in cover. So he comes up, he's within six inches. So he's got to roll five with his scrap pistol. He will miss. <laughs> okay, uh, over here, and I can't believe there's only three of them left. This guy is gonna see his opportunity. I think he is going, this is kind of hard to get at because there's a big ship in the way, but basically he's gonna move two inches to the edge. He's gonna drop down two inches, which I think you can do. You can jump down for free, but if you jump more than one inch down, it ends your mo it, it ends your round. So I don't think he wants to do that. He wants to climb down, which is another two inches, which puts him, uh, which puts him sort of right, sort of right in the vicinity. It's really hard to see. I know it's really hard to see, but you know, whatever. There we go. Now he's gonna fire at the VIP because <laughs> ah, he sees her. Maybe he, his wild crazed eyes uh, see her. He recognizes the uniform she's wearing and it's the same insignia that he has on his sh uh, ship officer's uniform. Yes, because this was a governmental ship as it turns out. And so somehow there's a weird sense of recognition in his eyes as he raises a scrap pistol and again, fires off a barrage of bullets. Target uh, within six inches behind cover is five up. Does he hit the VIP? Ooh, he does not. I thought that was gonna be a five, but it was a three. <laughs> he misses there, pa -pa -pa pow And that is the end of the enemies. Now we go to slow turns. Okay, well now, Kathria, she definitely has a shot from her position in the woods. It's more than six inches and the guy is in cover. So she is rolling at six, but she has a plus one to hit because she's awesome and she hits. Bang! Great, now she's doing a damage against him. This is a regular, but the toughness is only three. Four, boom, takes him out, blows his right arm off as it was extended as he was firing, and he drops dead. <laughs> that was Kathria, we have, this is going incredibly well, except we lost Kale, but uh, <laughs> that was Kathria. And now finally, we go to Vine. Vine, I think I see him more like a Vine Diesel, because he's a big, you know, he's a big bald guy. Yeah, yeah, Vine Diesel. Not that that's anything that Vin Diesel sounds like, but whatever. Okay, uh, <laughs> Vine, Vine with his infantry laser doesn't really have a shot, but he knows that stuff's going on here. So I think he, he moves at four. He's gonna move, he's gonna move through this terrain. This is not impassable. He's just gonna scramble off it. So that's gonna put him there, still in cover. And does he have the shot through the flames? Through the flames, does he have the shot? He does have a shot at this guy who's crunched among that wreckage, his scrap pistol still smoking from where he took out Kale. Vine seizes, uh, puts up his, his infantry laser, and he does a snapshot. Is he within six? He is not within six, I can tell that right now. That means he's firing uh, with a six up. He gets, uh, he does have a combat bonus of plus one as he's firing, so he rolls a six. A five plus one is six, so he hits, boom! With the infantry laser, there's no damage bonus, but against toughness three. Oh, unfortunately, he does not take him out. However, this is great. He hits this guy, and because he didn't take him out and the guy's not wearing armor, he stuns him for one round. So I've got this handy dandy little stun marker here. So he's stunned and knocked back one inch. So he's knocked back over here and he suffers a stun. Now what a stun means is that you can either uh, you can either attack or move, but not both. And at the end of your round, you remove a stun marker. If you take three stun markers, you're out. And he's, he's sort of knocked off the, the wreckage. Ugh! And that was the slow turn. Now we go to morale phase. I think we lost one, so I'm just gonna roll one die. Might have screwed up, but whatever. And uh, it's within the panic range. So someone who is uh, the guy who just got stunned, he decides that's enough and he gets out of dodge and he immediately leave, flees the battlefield, which leaves one guy left. At the beginning of round four, this is excellent. It looks like we're going to win and we're gonna win with the bonus as the VIP is scrambling through the wreckage. She finally pulls something up. She says, I've got it, I've got it. And whatever it is, it's like a it's like a, a, a crate or something. Then she cracks a crate open and there's some sort of like, uh, I don't know, some sort of electronic kind of weird looking orb or something like some sort of, uh, 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 like a black box maybe. That's kind of cool. So she retrieves the, the black box from the ship. She's gonna do this, she's gonna succeed because nobody can get to her this round. This is excellent. Okay, but we're not technically done yet. Oh, I forgot Mara. Mara had a shot. 
uh, but she didn't really have a shot. She can't see anybody. So uh, she, she dithers, she reloads. <laughs> okay, here we go. This is the fast action. I mean, we've already won, but we do want to clear this, this enemy and hold the field because that'd be better for us. Okay, what have we got here? Three ones. Okay, well, I think that's going to be him. Come on. It's going to be Stein and Vine, the, the gun twin, Stein and Vine, and um, also the VIP, which means everybody else goes later. Okay, so fast actions. This is going to be, oh, let's see here. Uh, I think he's going to have to climb down from this if he wants to get off this thing. So this is going to be... He's got five movement, but it's gonna be an extra one inch. So it's gonna be a total. He only needs, he only needs four to get there. Yeah, so he's gonna move four and one down. He's gonna climb down and he's gonna be there, which puts him behind cover. He's within six inches. Now he's going to use, it doesn't matter. He's gonna use his, yeah, he'll use his scrap. Oh no, he's gonna use his hand laser because hand laser has snapshot. And as we know, if you're within six inches of a snapshot weapon, you get plus one to hit. So he's close within cover, so that's five up, but he gets plus one to hit because of his snapshot. And that is that five up. Does he do it? He, oh, four plus one is five. Boom, against his toughness of three. Oh, it only drives him back and stuns him. The, the hail of laser fire uh, drives him back, which is um, which is rather unfortunate. Uh, over here, the VIP conducts herself and, uh, or, or conducts her mission and retrieves the black box. We technically win the mission at this point. Um, Vine is going to, yeah, he's now sort of in the open if he can get up there. Vine moves at four, so he can move three inches and one up to climb, which is gonna put him there, which means he has line of sight and he's within nine inches. He's, oh yeah, he's got an infantry laser. Oh, oh, I forgot. Vine has a battle visor, which basically acts as he's always aiming. He can reroll ones. I don't think that came up for him, but it might right now. Okay, so Vine is going to fire his infantry laser with one shot, snapshot. He's not within six. Yeah, he's he's got height on him, so this this cover doesn't count here. He's in the open, but, but not with a close range, so it's gonna be five up. Infantry laser. Bang, hits him. Does he do a casualty on him? Ooh, he does not, which means the guy is moved back another one inch into the trees and stunned for a second time. I shall stun you for a second time. That was fast actions. Everybody else is on slow. Enemy action now. Well, he sees his enemy. He's gonna, uh, he's gonna move. He is stunned. So he's gonna move back into cover here closer to the enemy because they're very aggressive. Remember, it's not a smart thing to do, but they're aggressive and crazy. So he moves into cover. Actually, can he get any closer to the guy? Yeah, he's gonna come. He's gonna, he's gonna basically come up here. So he is still in cover. Uh, he moves, he can't attack because he's stunned. His stun goes down from two to one. So he is stunned for one. That is the enemy action. We go to slow turns. I think Mara can uh, try and get some kind of shot from here if she can make it here, which I believe she can. Mara has a move of four, which puts her right there. Does she have line of sight? She sure does. And it's, and, but he's he's in cover. So this is gonna be a six up shot. She moved, which she, which is minus one to, to hit. Ooh, I don't even know if she can hit him, but let's see what happens. Uh, two, no, she misses. <laughs> I think uh, let's let's go to Kathria. Kathria moves at four. She is gonna try and get over here too. Uh, so she's gonna move over here, and I think she's gonna dash two more to try and get into this fight while it still lasts. And finally, the captain. Uh, the captain's guarding her, but I think the captain is going to move. He moves pretty fast. He moves five. Oh yeah, he could go for this thing. He can move seven, which puts him there. That's it. He moves and dashes. And that is everybody. Uh, we go to morale phase. So there, I don't, there was no more casualties this round. Uh, this guy still stuns, but he doesn't have to roll. We go into round five. Remember, we've already achieved victory condition, but we, we're gonna clean up this mess. Here we go. We're rolling our initiatives to see where everybody sits. There's a two and a two. Well, the captain's on two and that's good because he's gonna go first and grab that item of interest, which is great. And then I think I'm gonna give, um, who else has reactions of two? Reactions of two, it has to be, no, oh, Jenna. <laughs> oh, no, 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 Mara. Mara's got reactions of two as well. So Mara's gonna be two. Everybody else is gonna be on six. Six, six, six. I mean, not 
on six, but whatever. VIP's basically out because she's she's done her thing, which is perfectly fine. So the captain over here, he goes in the fast action phase. Now with these items of interest acquired by moving into contact with it and foregoing any other actions that round. That is awesome. So the captain sees that, he's moving his five and he picks up the item of interest. Boom, he's got it and he's done for the round. Uh, Mara is the only other one on fast action. She does see him. She's not gonna move. She's going to aim and fire. He's in cover. Uh, so that's uh, six up, but she can reroll ones. Uh, yeah, and unfortunately she misses. So that's the end of Mara. We go now to enemy phase. Enemy is going to charge, I think, into Stein. Ah, which is great. Barrels into him. And he, oh, but he's stunned. Okay, yeah, so if a character's engaged in a, in a brawl while stunned, the marker's removed, but the opponent receives a plus one bonus per stun marker. That's how that works. So he runs down and charges into Stein. Now they both roll these sixes and add their combat factor, but Stein's gonna get a plus one because of the stun condition on the enemy, which now gets removed. So here we go. Stein is rolling at plus one. Whoever gets higher hurts the other one. Oh, look at that, beautiful. Okay, so he bang. Oh, and also Stein is using a pistol, which would give him an additional plus one to this. So he actually rolled eight versus, uh, this guy's using a pistol, so eight versus five. He wins, which means he's gonna do damage and knock him back one inch, because every time you take damage, you do not you get knocked back one inch. Oh, and he rolled a natural six as well, which means you inflict an additional hit. Oh, that's great. So these are two hits coming in. So the damage against him, the first damage against toughness three takes him out immediately. And that is the ball game. That is fantastic. In round five, our guys lost Kale, but they swarmed across the battlefield, cleverly picking off the enemies with long range shots, causing the rest of the flee and allowing Captain Ganimer the opportunity to get the fancy loot, which we're going to decide, or we're gonna discover what this is. Uh, actually, we're not gonna discover, this is just gonna be plus two XP, but we will deal with that in the post battle sequence, which we are going to go into right now. Here we are in the post battle phase. The first thing I'm gonna do is deal with the fact that I found this fancy peculiar item and I gained plus two XP for the person who got it and that is the captain. Rice and Ganimer's XP, he had two from his character creation. Now he's at four. Let's go through the steps of post battle. God, that went well. Resolve rival status. If you fought an opponent that isn't a rival and held the field, which we did, roll 1d6. And on a one, they become a rival? No, okay. So these are not new rivals, <laughs> the, the ones we drove off. Resolve patron status if you succeeded in a patron mission. You may add the patron to your list of contacts on this planet, unless the job was a one-time contract, which it wasn't. Uh, we're gonna give this local government uh, contact a name, Rusov Palatan. <laughs> I'm just making stuff up. <laughs> <laughs> is there a new local government contact that they just got this from, which is nice. If you achieve this within the first four rounds of the game, you add an additional two credits in pay. We gotta remember that's gonna be plus two credits. So this is now a patron on this planet that we can go back to for jobs, which is kind of cool. All right, determine quest progress. Uh, we did not fight a battle that was part of a quest. Get paid, you earn 1d6 credits in pay, loot, bounty, or salvage. We're gonna roll 1d6, we're gonna get plus two because the fact we did it within two rounds. Uh, if you won the mission by completing your objective, treat any roll of a one or two as a three. If you did a patron job, add the pay bonus to the, or add the pay bonus to the danger pay, right. Plus two with this one. So this is gonna be a total of plus four creds, plus one D six. So three plus four is seven credits. So we add that to our list. Battlefield finds. If you held the field after a battle, which we did, you had an opportunity afterwards to search the battlefield for anything worth collecting. Okay, we roll 1d100 on the table below to see what we found on the battlefield since we stayed behind to check it out. 20, that is usable goods. Roll on the consumables table in the loot chapter. You receive one dosage of the item indicated. One dosage of... Still, the user gains plus one to hit but cannot move during this and the next round. Okay, neat. 
Oh, that's hilarious. I just realized that Stein had steel boots, something he got from his background. And if he rolls a five or six on a, on a brawl combat, he actually kicks the guy back, but he, he killed him, so. <laughs> okay, so that is what we found on the battlefield was a dose of still. Maybe that came from the sniper that we killed. Now, we check for invasion. If the enemy you just battled is an invasion threat, and I don't believe they were, yes, they are not an invasion threat, so we do not have to check for invasion uh, to see if the world is about to be invaded, which is a cool little feature in this game. We gather the loot. Roll once on the loot table to see what you've earned. What did we loot? Nine to two. Rewards. Roll once on the rewards subtable. What did we find in the wreckage of the ship that might be of interest? A rare substance. Ooh, wow. Roll 2d6 and receive credits equal to the highest roll. That's six more credits from this rare substance we found. I think, uh, I think it was also in the cargo of the ship that maybe uh, the captain kind of pocketed before the VIP could notice. <laughs> so we're up to 28 credits now. Determine injuries and recover. Yes, well, we know that Kale got taken out, which is bad. Uh, so he must roll on the injury table. This is for Kale and Kale rolls 33. Ooh, crippling wound. Require 1d6 credits of surgery immediately or suffer minus one permanent reduction to highest of speed or toughness. Well, we're obviously going to spend the money on making sure that he gets the surgery he needs and he's going to be 1d6 turns in sick bay. First of all, how many credits does it cost me to fix KL? One, ha <laughs> ha. a good surgeon in the city of, of um, what was this place called? In the city of Putnik Prime, I think maybe um, I think maybe one of the patrons that we have was able to point us to a decent surgeon that did us a favor. So we're brought down to 27 creds for that, which is good. However, Kale is going to be in sick bay for how many campaign turns? Two campaign turns. That's not terrible. Experience and character upgrades. So each character that participated in the battle will now earn experience points. So Kale gets plus one XP, which puts him up to five because he had a bunch. Everyone else. They survived and won. I've already got uh, Mara's plus one for her first character to inflict a casualty. So everyone gets three for, for surviving and winning. Now we can spend XP at this point to acquire a character upgrade. I don't think anybody has enough. Ooh, actually that's not true. The captain has seven points so he could increase his combat skill. Ooh, that's good. Invest in advanced training. At this stage, you can opt to um, send somebody to, to specialty school in the off time if you want, like learning how to be a doctor or a pilot or something. It's pretty expensive and I don't think we have the money to, to dump on that just yet. So I'm not gonna, um, I'm not gonna do anything about that. However, purchase items. You you may pay three credits to, roll, uh, to receive a roll on the military weapon gear uh, or gadget table. I think I want to go military. I got to get some of these guys better guns. So I'm going to roll on the military. Well, with our newfound winnings, what do we find on the potentially black market? A military rifle. Okay, well, that's not terrible. So Kale's got a handgun, which I'm going to have him keep, but I'm going to have him keep the military rifle as well, which is good. It's a good weapon. And then roll for campaign event and apply the result immediately. The campaign event this round, 34. One of the crew overheard something interesting. Add one rumor. What, pray tell, does that rumor come in the form of? That's what I want to know. And it's an old map showing a location. Ooh. So that's in, uh, as we're, sc we're just scouring the markets of these bustling markets, somebody, um, when they buy the military rifle, actually, they take it out of its case and tucked underneath the foam of the interior of the case to keep the, the rifle secure they find this old map, which might lead to something interesting and become a quest. That was the campaign event, and now we roll for a character event. Select a random non-bot, non solus character. There are seven of us. Kale. Okay, this is interesting. There's a character event for Kale. Now, he is a precursor. Because their lifespan supplies greater opportunity for past experience, if a precursor is the subject of a character event, you may roll for two events and pick which one you prefer. First option, 44. Have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with the crew member, select a random crew member, and both earn one XP. That's pretty good. Or, because Kale has been around, where did it go? A random item carried by the character has been lost. When rolling for a character event next campaign, turn to see if you find it. Okay, we don't want that one. So instead, Kale in the med bay has a heart-to-heart -heart with, we'll say, yeah, I think it's Vine he has the conversation with. And finally, we check for the galactic war progress. There's always a war that could happen. There is a war that's somewhere out there in the fringes and it might find us here. If you are tracking any planets that were previously invaded, which we aren't because nothing has been invaded yet. So we don't have to worry about the war, but instead that is the end of campaign turn one. 
all in all, very cool. Love these tables. Love the randomness. Love how uh, all of the events uh, really tell a story. Uh, everything was connected. Everything felt really connected with the mission and how everything turned out. Uh, so yeah, all in all, super, super impressive. And I'm very excited to get to campaign turn two, uh, which you can join me for on the very next episode of Me, Myself and I. Thank you so much for joining me here on this five parsecs from home campaign. Please do hit like and subscribe or join us on Patreon or here on the YouTube channel. You can become a member uh, or go over to the website, memyselfanddie.com, where you can buy some great merchandise all handmade here in the home studio also if you want to buy any of the, in the, any of the supplements that i use in uh, the sh in any of the shows on the channel the links for all of those are uh, all available in the um in the comment section below through the drive through drive through rpg links so much fun uh, can't wait for the second one please do join me and we'll see you next time on uh, me myself and die